Hey guys, it's Keon. I did want to start this video by reading some of the comments in my body language breakdown video for this main event between Marab Devalishvili and Pyotr Jan. Because a lot of the comments were hating on me. People were saying I didn't know what I was talking about. I was talking out of my ass. I didn't even see the correct angle. This is not what it means when he's doing that. It's not the money sign. It's actually come over here, Piotr. If you looked at the other angle, you'd understand. See, when you're an expert like me, you don't need other angles. You just need one. I've been doing this for years. I have a degree. I understand how people are saying, okay, he got the body language right for the John Jones fight. Anyone could pick John Jones, okay? That's fair. But Marab Devalishvili against Piotr Jan, that's a hard pick. A lot of people are saying Piotr is going to come back, make a statement and show why he is the number one contender. He didn't lose his previous fight to Sean O'Malley. He didn't lose to the Funk Master. He's going to beat Marab and put on a statement. <sighs> I so badly wanted to read some comments. If you want to check them out, the people who were hating Go on ahead. But they taught me in Harvard that in defeat or victory, you cannot put people down. And even though I'm on a high right now, because I'm correct about this, I don't want to embarrass anyone. Marab Devalishvili. <laughs> Man, what a performance. Remember what I said? This over this. This over this. They were saying that this didn't mean money. They were saying, oh, come here, Piotr. Sure, maybe to the untrained eye, it meant come here, Piotr. But for someone who's been analyzing body language for years this is money and that's what marab did tonight he put on a money performance he made a statement in this fight it wasn't like the fights against aljamain sterling or sean o'malley for piotr because this fight for piotr was a bad one he got absolutely dominated. And I could already see people saying, hmm, Marab attempted so many takedowns and could only get 10 or 11 of them. Okay, what was Piotr doing? Let's look at the strikes. Marab landed almost double the amount of significant strikes in this fight compared to Piotr. What was Piotr doing? If he was defending the takedowns, he must have been doing something else, correct? No. And look, I don't even want to put down Piotr when it comes to this. I actually feel bad for the guy. I'll talk about what's next for him in another video. But Marab Devalishvili, man, this guy, money. This always wins over a push. Never push your opponents. It could only work for goats like John Jones. But if you're not a goat, the push is a dangerous tactic. The money, though, shows confidence. That's a little lesson for Body Language Breakdown by Keon Kimura. Marab Devalishvili has cemented his spot as the number one contender. I even think 
he's over Sean O'Malley at this point because I agree with people saying that Piotr barely even lost to Sean O'Malley in his last fight. Personally, I thought Piotr won, and I know a lot of people did too. But in this fight with Marab, it was clear. Every round, he lost. In round one, he did look good. He had his moments, some nice light kicks. But Marab, the pace, the pressure from this guy is unlike any other. I remember watching his fight against Cody Stamen, and he was putting that same amount of pressure on Cody. And I was like, man, Marab is the real deal. This guy's going to go far because how can you stop that amount of pressure, especially for a strong wrestler like Cody? He was unable to keep up. So I could only imagine when a striker goes up against Marab. Don't get me wrong. A striker can find success against the pressure that Marab puts on them. For example, Marlon Marais almost finished Marab in their fight. But even then, Marab showed so much toughness, came back and got the finish himself. Not only does he put on a lot of pressure and could keep going for all five rounds, but he is very tough. And Piotr, he had some moments. He connected with some nice shots, but it did not slow down Marab whatsoever. Marab kept pushing the pace for all five rounds, and it was just amazing to see. If you're not impressed with that performance, I don't know what to say. You must really love Piotr Jan because I'm already seeing a lot of people saying, oh, but Piotr defended so many of Marab's takedowns. I understand that. That's impressive in its own right. But aside from that, what was Piotr doing? That's the question we have to answer. Just defending takedowns is not going to win you a fight. Because in the end of the day, Marab was pushing the pace of this fight. Octagon control. He was maintaining that while Piotr wasn't. I could understand if Piotr was maintaining octagon control by defending the takedowns and then coming back with shots of his own, but he wasn't doing that. For all five rounds, Marab was pressing forward, attempting takedowns. If he didn't get the takedown, he connected with shots of his own. At one point, he connected with a brutal leg kick that seemed to hurt Piotr, and that really changed the momentum of the fight. Because in the first round, it was somewhat competitive, but I still gave it to Marab. But after that leg kick in round two, it was all Marab from there. Piotr was unable to get much done. He connected with some shots here and there, but... Marab, Marab, connect, connect, connect. <laughs> Look, I'm excited right now. I can't even say the word connected. Marab connected with so much more. Like I said, double the amount of significance. <laughs> I can't even say significant either. Double the amount of significant strikes for Marab in this fight. So if people are coming with the excuse of, oh, but Marab defended most of the takedowns, what about the striking? In the end of the day, solid performance by Marab Devalishvili. Very fun fight overall. And yeah, I think his best performance to date. This definitely puts him in that number one contender spot over Sean O'Malley. Because, man, Sean barely got past Piotr. Like I said, I thought Piotr won that fight. Marab was able to do what Sean and Aljamain were unable to do against Piotr, and that was dominate him. That's impressive, and a lot of it is just because of the pace. Marab's pace is unlike any other that I've ever seen, honestly. So I'm excited for this guy, but man, it seems like he's at a dead end right now. He's in this number one spot. But his teammate, Aljamain Sterling, is still the champion. Now it's like, what's next 
for Marab. He already said he's not going to fight Aljamain. That's his brother. That fight is never going to happen. But he did say the plan is Aljamain is going to defend his belt against Henry Cejudo. And then after that happens, Aljamain is going to move up to 145 and try to capture gold there. And once the belt is vacant, that's when Marab is going to fight for it. So maybe he waits for the belt to be vacated. So wait around for Henry and Aljo to conclude. That's when Marab is going to make his move. Of course, it would be easier if Henry recaptures the Bantamweight Championship. Then Marab can slip there easily, but... You also have Sean O'Malley in the mix. And to be honest, even though I think Marab is better than Sean O'Malley right now, I think the UFC is going to give Sean that title fight over Marab because Sean is the bigger name, the more popular fighter. So it's a tough spot for Marab. I think the best option is if Aljo wins this fight against Henry and then vacates the belt then it would be a vacant title fight. A title fight for, for the vacant belt between Marab and Sean. Unless they do Sean and Henry for the vacant belt. I don't think Henry will be in the mix if he loses to Aljamain. So hopefully Aljamain wins and then vacates the belt. To be honest, I'd love to see a number one contender fight between Marab and Sean just to settle everything. But the UFC doesn't want to do that. They got Sean to this spot. Everything worked out for them to get Sean to the title picture. They don't want to risk it against a fighter like Marab because that is a nightmare matchup for Sean O'Malley. Let's be honest. Sure, Sean can have some success on the feet, but... Man, the pressure from Marab is just unlike any other, and I don't even think Sean will be able to handle that. Especially the takedown attempts. I feel like Marab is going to succeed with the takedowns even more in a fight with Sean. It won't just be attempts. He'll have a lot of attempts, but he would bring Sean down a lot because if Piotr was able to do it, I have no doubt Marab will be able to do it even more. So yeah, Marab Devalishvili, man. This guy is the real deal. It sucks that he's in this situation where his teammate is the champion, but I love the respect he has towards his brother. Doesn't want to fight him. Wants his brother to defend his belt one more time and then vacate it, so then he can have a chance to fight for it. And I hope that happens. But if it doesn't, let's say Aljamain loses to Henry and then they make Henry Rashawn afterwards. Who should Marab fight next? Marab can wait. I think it will be a little bit too long of a wait for him. But if he wants to take another fight in the meantime, he's going to have to fight someone below him. So I say the winner between Marlon Chito Vera and Corey Sandhagen. Whoever wins that fight fights Marab for the number one contender bout slot. And whoever wins that fights the winner of Sean versus Henry. But what do you think? Were you impressed with Marab Devalishvili's performance? What's next for him? And do you think he'll become a UFC champion? Because, <laughs> because. I don't know. I was going to say because I kind of think he has a good chance of doing it personally. Uh, but it, it depends on how everything plays out. A fight between the winner of Corey and Marlon is a very tough one. And if by some chance Marab has to fight Henry, that's also a tough fight for him too. So it really depends who's at the top by the time he fights for the title. If it's Sean O'Malley, oh man, we're seeing a future champ in Marab Devalishvili. But that's a lot for now, so I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.